What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. It was sabotage. The news, and he called me at... Just a, a working stiff out trying to raise a little bread. You're a diabolical atomic physicist. That car is not going to finish the race. They're going to wreck it. Sam. I'm at the racetrack. Have you found Robert Denby yet? I just got here, Leonard. Well, when you locate him, report back. Roger. Out. So you're at it again, Leonard. All the years I've known you, I've never seen you act like this. Haven't you persecuted that poor guy enough? Oh, poor guy, my eye, Elliot. Denby's been involved in every major act of defense sabotage in the last five years. You haven't a shred of evidence. No, but he was lurking somewhere around the scene every time. Well, guilt by association, huh? I mean, you've spied on him, you've bugged him, illegally searched his premises, finally drove him into court. How'd you know that? You think it's a secret? Even my lab assistants know it. They laughed their heads off when that judge granted him a restraining order forbidding you to harass him further. And if you ignore it, you might find yourself in contempt. So who's harassing him? I'm sitting here. Yeah, Casey's doing your dirty work. If Judge Witherspoon found out... He won't. Does Casey know you've got a restraining order? Well, I... I haven't got around to telling him yet. That order applies to everyone at Intersect, including Casey. I mean, he could end up in jail. There's our patsy now. Billy! Uh, yes, sir. Come here a minute. John, I want you to meet Buffalo Billy Joe Higgins, one of my very best men. Bill? It's John Hiller. John's the vice president of Baxter Electronics. Oh, well, howdy, sir. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Nice oh, to meet yeah. You. Please, Phil Hankering is drive the special? Oh, uh, yeah, I sure am. You know, Billy here won the Peachtree 50 lap. Uh, it's just a little dirt trucker back in uh, North Carolina, but I won it four years running. I'm uh, very impressed. No, you know, Cole Harmon is liable to get sick one of these days. I'm thinking about appointing a relief driver. Would you consider the job? Yes, I would. Yes, sir. It's yours. Well, this is a chance I've been waiting for, Mr. Demby. I don't know how to thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Nonsense. You've earned it. Now you better get back to work, eh? Yes, sir. And it's nice to meet you. Sure is a yokel. <laughs> I'll pick you up in the van at dawn tomorrow. Hey, 
Crazy Rider. Crazy Rider, how you doing? Hey, 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 this is really good to see you. I can't believe it. What are you doing here? What are you doing in that outfit? What am I doing here? I'm working here. I'm in the racing business. Hey, what's this? Some kind of love face or something? Oh, cupcake. Hey, I want you to meet my best buddy. This is Lazy Rider. Hi. Hi. Name's really Tina. Glad to meet you, Tina. Sam Casey. Hi. Just calls me Cupcake because I'm the Baxter Cup promotion girl. You know, handing out samples and making visiting firemen feel at home. You know something, Cupcake? When I was back driving the truck, this old boy saved my life. Pull some black bars off my back. Hey, come on. Come on. Hey, did I ever tell you about it? Good to meet you. Yes, sir. Old lazy rider here is a regular one-man army. Hey, come on, come on. All right, tell Tina what you did for me later, then. Oh, that wasn't nothing. Wasn't nothing? Tina, if it weren't for old Bill here, I'd still be lying at the bottom of Hill 10 with 30 tons of truck wrapped around my neck. What happened? I lost my brakes. That's what happened. <laughs> Good, Bill. I lost my rig to the mortgage people. I really need a job, buddy. I thought I'd hit Demby for one of the crew of the Baxter Special. Oh, hey, that's easy as pie. I happen to be Mr. Demby's main man. That's right. Mr. Demby always says that he's the best tire changer he ever had. Not no more, Cupcake. Not no more. I now happen to be relief driver. Now, what you think of that? Oh, Buffalo, I'm so proud of you. Later, honey, later, right now. We gotta get old Lazy Rider here out of the unemployment line. Come on, buddy. All right. <laughs> Recommending Bill, that's good enough for me. Well, I sure would like to have him on the backup crew when I get behind the wheel of that special, sir. Sam's a real auto fixing man. Well, I tell you what, I really had in mind something like a gas man on the pit crew, okay? Anything's all right with me. All right, that's it then. Get him some cover on, sir. Okay. We're a team. How about that, huh? Of course, it is more than much, but uh, you can work your way up like I do. Hey, <laughs> get the job? Yeah. Sure, you yeah, got the right. job. Okay. And the celebration's on me. It's amateur night down at the pit stop saloon. And we three are going to be there. Woohoo! Okay, yes. Mr. Driscoll, Sam Casey on line four. Okay. Yes, Sam. Leonard, I got a job on Denby's crew. Great. So if you want to reach me tonight, I'll be at a place called the Pit Stop Saloon. Well, will Denby be there? Yeah, I think there's a good chance. Look, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Yes, Dr. Warren, I just dropped by to find out what time you wanted me at the test flight monitoring tomorrow morning. 6 a.m. on the dot. Leonard, you're asking to go to jail for what you're doing. And Casey could get it in the neck, too. 
Now, Warren, Warren, come back here. Come here. Sit down. You know what you are? You're my hair shirt. Always needling, needling, needling. But I'm gonna let you in on a piece of very highly classified information, Mr. Atomic Physicist. You know the properties of deuterium? Well, it's the world's rarest metal. And theoretically, with unstable isotopes that can be fused at extremely high temperatures, creating atomic fission. Two years ago, 24 kilos of the stuff disappeared from NATO's deuterium bank in Brussels. Now, I say that Robert Denby was the thief. That for sure? Nicole, an educated guess. Yeah, but Denby's an auto mechanic. Nonsense. He's a trained atomic physicist. Oh, that's incredible. Nothing about Denby's incredible. Now, do you understand why I put Sam on the case? Court order or no court order? I do now. Our next contestant is Buffalo Bill. <laughs> He taught me everything he knew. He said, son, take that brew. Yeah, barrel on brew. Oh, the brew is the best way around the track. Now, when you take that brew, you don't look back. You just slam on through. Yeah, take that brew. Hell, Buffalo is going to make his move. He's arching high to grab that brew. So clear the track for Buffalo. Just, uh, why don't we just all, uh, shake hands and, uh... All right, you guys, now let's break it up. Get in. Let's stop all the punching and the bleeding, all right? What do you say? You got it. Man, this little fella, he's, he's a bus saw. Yeah. Oh, Dynamite. Well, all I can say is, come on, everybody. Drinks are on us. Come on, Buffalo. Finish your song. <laughs> around the track cause when you grab that groove you don't look back until they wave that checkered flag and when they wave that checkered flag they're gonna wave that checkered flag at old buffalo
Roger, XJ240. What is your altitude and airspeed? Altitude 17,500. Airspeed 1,250 knots. Over. Roger, XJ240. Maintain your present heading of 310 degrees. This cassette will transmit a radio signal at 2,500 megacycles. Is that how you fuse the dew dream I planted in the radio? <laughs> My theory's correct, yes. XJ240 to ground control. Airspeed now 1,500 knots. XJ240 climb right. to 32,000. Cross your fingers, here we go. We're heading to 245 degrees. Increase your airspeed to 1,900 knots. Over. Sabotage. That means Bob Denby. Somehow he used that stolen deuterium. There wasn't a gram of deuterium in that jet. Leonard, your paranoia about this guy is can confuse the whole investigation. Might make us miss the real cause of mechanical failure, turbulence, any number of things. It was sabotage, I tell you. I got a gut feeling. Call me a limousine. What for? Because I gotta confront him face to face. You know, all those sweaty days in Berlin, we were building the Dutrim into the frame of the car. <laughs> I never really thought it'd work. So, how do we cash in? We wait until the Pentagon puts the XJ-240 into production. You know, maybe they might not now. Well, sure they will. Eventually, they'll think of this as just some sort of a freak accident, that's all. You know, they're authorized to make 200 of these babies, and each one of them with Baxter Electronic Systems on board. So who do we peddle it to? Soviets? The highest bidder, John. The highest bidder. Let's say we start the bidding off at uh, a billion. <laughs> Rubles? No, Swiss francs. We have to make sure we get the racing special over to Baxter Electronics immediately. We let the yokel take the qualifying run today. How do you make sure he piles up? Well, I've got some pills made up to look like salt tablets. I'll give him a couple before he gets into the car. Slum powerhouse, huh? Well, it really isn't just a stock charger, is it? Well, yeah, but it's a modified cupcake. Modified, about $40,000 worth. And then when we raced that exhibition in Berlin last week, a couple of square head mechanics come in and really souped it up. What mechanics? I didn't see them. Uh, then we took it off to some garage for about five days there in Berlin. Is that East or West Berlin? Turn fine home. Bill? Come here, Yes, sir. Now, listen, you're going to need a qualifying speed of at least 153, 155 miles an hour to win the pole. Of course, you can just get me in the first four rows and I'll be satisfied. Yes, sir. I've got some tablets in that trail I want you to take. You know, count of the dehydration and everything, will you? Okay. Yeah. Get me. Never, never mind about that. We don't have time. I'm sure the judges want to get you on the track right away. Go ahead, get with it now. Yes, sir. Let's get out of the heat. Wish me luck, Sam. Hey, hey, you know it, old buddy. Come on. Do you come, Jake? Okay. the charges against me this time, huh? You sabotaged the XJ-240, didn't you? I suppose you've already presented your evidence for that to Judge Witherspoon, huh? Or is this another one of your wild accusations, Leonard? I'll get the evidence. You know, I'm beginning to worry about you. You become paranoid. You think of yourself as some, well, as Sherlock Holmes, and me as the arch-criminal Moriarty. When are you going to get it into your head that I'm just a, a working stiff out trying to raise a little bread, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. 
You're a brilliant and diabolical atomic physicist. Trying to make a living as a grease monkey, eh? You try that on Judge Witherspoon, my friends. You're harassing me. Now all I have to do is pick up the phone and tell Judge Witherspoon, and you're in the pokey for contempt of court. Harassing you, Bob? Ridiculous. As far as Judge Witherspoon knows, I'm only here to wish you luck in the race tomorrow. You tell him that? Under oath? It's perjury. Really? Imagine that. You'd have a little trouble with your ethics there, wouldn't you, Leonard? None, turkey. You keep your nicknames for your punks and your muggers, Driscoll. That's Driscoll now, huh? What, are you losing your cool, Denby? Get out of here, Sherlock. Let's clean up. Get the phone and use it right now. Ah, uh, no need, no need. Just leave it. You know, I'm gonna get you, Denby. You're right. Moriarty, Sherlock. He always got his man, and so will I. Did you do it? No, Driscoll dropped by unexpectedly. Who's Driscoll? Well, he's a cop that's been hounding me for years. I wasn't about to try and pull it off with him here. All right, then, when? We're gonna have to do it tomorrow, during the race itself. the special in the big race tomorrow. Wow! Oh, all right. Uh, uh, sir, uh, now that I'm ahead of Honcho, uh, we ain't got no relief driver. Uh, I was wondering if you'd uh, make my buddy Sam uh, my backup man. Not that you're gonna need one, Bill, but okay, okay. Thank you very much, sir. You see there, old laser rider? I told you you wouldn't be gas pouring very long. See, we're a team now. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, how about that? That's good. Well, it's ridiculous, Sam. Why would they wreck the car? Well, five will get you a ten. It has to do with that stolen deuterium. How? Why? All right. They raced that car in an exhibition in Berlin last month. Now, Buffalo told me after the race they dragged it off to some garage. He didn't know where, but it was very near the border. Aha! Uh -huh. Smuggled the deuterium into the country, built into the frame. That's the way I figured. So let's impound the car and let Elliot here check it out. Oh, Sam, when will you ever learn that this is a country of laws, not of men? I would need a court order and we don't have any real evidence. What's more, Judge Witherspoon would hold me in contempt if he even suspects this operation. Okay, Leonard, hey, no problem. The raceway rules say that any sponsor can protest the power plant of another sponsor's car. Now all we gotta do is find some sponsor willing to lodge a protest. And then you and Elliot be there when they drag it in for inspection. We've already tried that ploy. But Homer Baxter is much too popular. We only found one sponsor by the name of Delbert who was willing to lodge a protest, but only if the special finishes in the money. You're kidding me. Not even under these circumstances? These circumstances, Sam, are top secret. Let alone the fact that if I slander Denby, Judge Witherspoon will go up the wall. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, that car is not going to finish the race. They're going to wreck it, and Buffalo's going to go with it. Buffalo's driving? Yeah. That poor guy's jumping with joy, and they're out to kill him. Well, you can be in the pit to see they don't try any tricks. And what if I blow it, Leonard? Buffalo's expendable, is that it? Sam, the bottom line is the car has to finish so Delbert will lodge his protest, and then I'll have Denby. That's all that matters. Well, Buffalo matters to me, Leonard. And I'm not going to let you use him as a pawn in your lousy vendetta. Meaning what? Meaning I'll drive the special. Sam, come back here.
East Berlin? I mean, you mean to tell me this Casey was pumping Buffalo about what happened in Europe? That's right, Mr. Denby. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Well, I thought he was just some dumb friend of Buffalo's. I don't know, then I had second thoughts. All right, maybe this Casey needs going over in a dark alley. You know where he is right now? Sure. He's meeting Buffalo and me here at the pit stop. All right. Aha, Saya. Hi, Good to see you. Come on, got to. I just couldn't fall for ice cream and donuts only leave me feeling blue yes they do so i fell in love with a cupcake little darling you took my heart and left me with a sweet tooth for you i'm in love with a cupcake and i Tell you why she knows how to love me, and she's sweeter than mom's apple pie. Oh, she's sugar, she's spice, she's everything nice, and I know that she loves me too. Yes, I do. So I fell in love with a cupcake, little darling. You took my heart and left me with a sweet tooth for you. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and truckers. <laughs> I'm here at my favorite trucker's bar tonight to invite each and every one of you to come out to the raceway tomorrow and watch old Buffalo win the 500. <laughs> Hey, Lazy Red, how you doing? You can, baby. Good, Bill. Can I, uh, can I have Bill alone for a couple of minutes? Hey, old buddy, this is my one and only. I'm going to be marrying this little cupcake. <laughs> That's right, right after he wins that race tomorrow on the special. You're not going to be racing the special tomorrow, Bill. I can't let you do it. What do you mean you're not going to let me? Tell him you're sick or something, but I want you to turn it over to me. But he ain't sick. You know, talk like that's not gonna make him sick. I don't like what I'm hearing. I mean, what you talking about? That car is gonna pile up tomorrow. I don't want you in it. Now, that's, that's all I can tell you right now, all right? Yeah, I'm a racing driving man. I can handle that hot rod. Someone is out to wreck that car. He's making it up, sweet pea. He just wants all the glory for himself. Oh, come on, Tina, please. Well, that's the way it's sounding to me, old buddy. That's right. Ain't that sweet? You get him a job and he tries to take yours. I just can't believe you'd ever do a thing like this. Bill, come on, Bill, listen. No, 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 no. I thought you was my friend. Now I can see you was just out for yourself the whole time. You dumb jerk. Don't you understand? Someone is trying to kill you. And all I'm trying to do is stop it. Don't you call him no jerk. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Wait, wait, listen to me, Bill, please. <laughs> Okay, call the Smokies.
freshman vibe. <laughs> we look like we've been stomped on and hung up with it. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard when I'm hurting so bad. <laughs> hey, what was all that out there? A couple of mean dudes trying to do us in, I guess. Yeah, I figured that out, but, uh, but, uh, but why? Yo, Bill. Something I should have told you a long time ago, man. What's that? I work for the government. You what? I'm an agent with Intersect. Hey, that ain't nothing like uh, revenue. I mean, I can't abide revenue, Sam. <laughs> no, I'm not a revenuer. I'm just a plain old everyday federal agent. Woo wee, my old buddy Lazy Rider's a secret agent. <laughs> All right, hey, take it easy. I guess those fellas out there that jumped you must have been spies, huh? Well, yeah, you might call them that, yeah. Do you, uh, I kind of figured it were. You really want to drive that car tomorrow, don't you? Yeah, I really do. I guess I didn't realize how much it meant to you. So why don't you go ahead and take it? You really mean that? Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! All right, all right, hey, calm down. Okay, now, the only thing is, you've got to finish in the money. Because we want to demand an official raceway inspection. That's the only way we can get it. Well, don't you worry about your raceway inspection because old Buffalo is going to be leading the herd. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you tell us. Oh. Now, this is a prototype of the Baxter radio that was used at the XJ240. And this is a gram of deuterium that was shipped to me from the bank at NATO. Now, let us assume that the plastic housing of the radio was somehow laced with deuterium. We believe we've discovered how the fusing of the deuterium was triggered. Put this on. Wait, are you gonna test your theory right now? Until we do, all it is is theory. Uh, I hope you don't blow up the building. Well, with a kilo of deuterium, maybe, but not with a gram. Now, this is a transmitter. The clue Leonard was in the ultra-high cycle signal that we monitored during the test flight. We determined that it was of 2,500 megacycles. I will now transmit a precise signal. Could Ted be have blown up the XJ240 this way? If he could somehow get a grand of deuterium into the radio, he could. Thanks, Elliot. Your demonstration's gonna help convict him. Now well, it's time for me to get to the track. Believe me, I've waited five years for this day. And I'm gonna be in on the kill. All set, old buddy? Yeah, yeah. Just give me a couple of minutes, Bill. Why don't you go ahead? I'll catch up with you. Oh, okay.
るほか It's all right, honey. Cupcake's here. Where's Sam? He's driving the special. Stealing your glory, just like I said he would. I don't know. He, he has to finish so the raceway can inspect the car and get to Spass. Mm. Oh, what's Spass, honey? Can you keep a secret? You know I can, love it. You got Sam all wrong. He's one of the good guys. Well, what kind of good guy? He's, he's a good guy agent. He, was, he works with an outfit called uh, uh, Inter Intercept. Well, obviously, Drisco's got somebody standing by to lodge a protest. How do we stop him? Well, we can't. I'd say that car's gonna be in the raceway garage about six o'clock, surrounded by intersect agents, tearing it apart. So our plan goes down the drain. But it is a perfect setup for me to get rid of Driscoll, get him off my back, and for good. What's perfect about it? Well, I have the radio receiver built in the frame. Six o'clock. I'll set it off below that garage sky high. Goodbye, Leonard Driscoll. Take the flag all by lonesome. It's not we, Hiller. It's you. I wasn't in Berlin. So you made a fool out of old Buffalo. Hey, now don't you get no wrong ideas about your little old cupcake. Honest, I can explain it. I can explain. Now I can explain. Hey, 
Sherlock, off to the slammer. What about little Miss Cornplume, what happened to her? She and Hiller are in custody and can't stop talking. Uh, folks, I'd like to do a, a, a song for you now that I just put together for my buddy Sam. Thank you, Sam, for saving my life, for saving my life. Thank you, Sam. But when you consider the trouble that follows me around, I'd be safer in heaven than here on the ground. You saved my life. Here I am. It probably wasn't worth it, but thank you, Sam. Thanks, man. That was good. It was great. You really liked that lazy ride? Yeah, yeah. I really liked it. <laughs> All right. Sure beats your fighting. Uh -huh. 